I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today you join me here in Canberra in the Australian Capital Territory for the launch of this, the new Hyundai Nexo. Probably one of the most interesting vehicles I've ever driven. Why is that? Well, stay tuned. The Hyundai Nexo becomes the first hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle to officially arrive in Australia, beating the second gen Toyota Mirai by five days, which isn't a bad result if you ask me. Now, for the last few years, battery electric powertrains have been all the rage in terms of where car technology is going in future, but the Hyundai Group, and Toyota as well, are betting significant resources that hydrogen fuel cell technology is going to be a part of the mix in future, mainly for large heavy vehicles that have to transport a significant mass. Now, the Nexo is not really one of those vehicles. This is a mid-size SUV, pretty much line ball in dimensions to the current Tucson crossover. But what it is, is effectively a rolling test bed for what this energy source can do for vehicles. And the ACT government here in Australia have signed on to lease 20 of them for the next three years. There's a brand new hydrogen refueling station that's ready to go here in Canberra. So this basically will be a living experiment for a hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle in Australia. And of course, Toyota have their new Mirai coming along as well. Now there's obviously been raging debate recently around the place of hydrogen compared to battery electric. And you can get into that argument in the comments if you like, but in today's video, we're going to look at the Nexo, we'll check out the interior, the boot space, and then take this mid-size hydrogen-fueled SUV out for a drive to see what it's like on the road. But before we do that, make sure to hit subscribe down below. You may be wondering what it costs to buy a Hyundai Nexo here in Australia. And the simple answer is you can't, at least not yet. What they've done for the ACT government is a lease plan for three years that includes every expense related to the car, effectively, and the hydrogen coming out of the ACT refueler is free for the first year. So a lot of the costs here are really up in the air and we can't provide definitive answers on them yet, but we can certainly get close. So there are more lease packages being put together for the Nexo and businesses and government fleets can inquire with Hyundai, but you can buy these privately in the UK from Hyundai over there. And they cost 69,000 pounds, which is about 125,000 Australian dollars. So not cheap, but when you consider that hydrogen fuel cell technology in vehicles like this is, is pretty new and certainly hasn't been scaled up, the high cost makes sense, even if it does mean that that would make the Nexo comfortably the most expensive Hyundai on sale and more expensive than a Genesis GV80, for example. Now, inside the cabin, it certainly doesn't feel like a $125,000 car, but nor does it feel cheap and flimsy. In fact, it probably has the nicest interior of a non-Genesis Hyundai. The Nexo was the first model to debut the bridge-type center console that we've since seen go into the Santa Fe and the Palisade, and it works just as well here. It is a button fest, but it does mean there's a physical control for just about everything, including climate and infotainment. And then you get a really crisp 12 inch screen up here for controlling your navigation, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, digital radio. Now in front of the driver, you get a relatively small seven inch cluster rather than the second 12 inch display that you get on some of the newer Hyundais, but it still works well. Plus you have the blind spot cameras that we saw on the Santa Fe and also the Kia Sorento, and they work just as well here in the Nexo. Really cool steering wheel design, I really like it. And the interior color combination in this car is the light version. It's basically cream with sort of bronze highlights. There's also a navy blue interior, which is particularly nice. Quality is good, soft touch materials, pretty much not there, but otherwise pretty much everywhere else. It feels solid, it feels like a really very much a decent car in here, but also quite similar to a combustion vehicle. There's nothing too crazy about this design. It's quite livable. The seats have really good electric adjustment, both sides, they're comfortable, they have heating and cooling, there's a pano roof, there's wireless smartphone charging. Basically, Hyundai Australia ticked every available option for this car. Now, here in the center console, we've got some storage, just one cup holder underneath here. You've got your USB port and a little bit of incidental storage. A bit more storage under the bridge with that wireless charger. Pop out cup holder over on the passenger side, which is pretty cool. And small door bins. They won't take a one liter bottle, unfortunately, but still pretty cool cabin. Let's have a look at the back seat. 
here in the back of the Nexo, you get the benefit of the fact that this vehicle is sized pretty much like a Tucson. In fact, the room in the second row is almost bigger than that car, I would say. For myself, it's six foot. Headroom is good. I've got several inches behind my own driving position. Lots of room. Tow room is good too. And even the center seat is pretty usable. Not too much of a perch. You also get benefits like air vents, a 12 volt socket, soft touch materials, and a flip down armrest. And certainly, as a fleet vehicle being used by the government down here in Canberra, getting five people into this thing won't be too much of a chore. And you can see that if it was available privately, it'd be quite a usable family car, though there isn't a third row in the back. But with Hyundai talking about its larger vehicles transitioning to hydrogen, hypothetically in future, you can imagine a large Hyundai SUV using the hydrogen fuel cell elements of this vehicle in future. Around at the back end of the Nexo, you find what's probably this vehicle's most distinctive angle. The front end kind of looks like a modernized Tucson to my eyes, but this is really quite unique with these tail lights, which are really quite special actually, and the spaced out badging that runs along the center of the boot in blue with silver chrome surrounds. Now, the other thing you're gonna see around the back of the Nexo if you're driving behind it is the car spitting water out of its uh, exhaust pipes, if you will. And that's because the other byproduct of the processes that play in the Nexo is water. You get electricity and water as the hydrogen is converted and it expels it as you drive. Particularly if you floor the throttle, you actually get quite a lot of water coming out the back of the car, which is kind of interesting. Now, underneath this power tailgate, you find a relatively practical boot. 461 litres is the rating back here and you'll get a couple of suitcases in you know, without problems. The cars are also being supplied with this durable rubber mat. Beneath that, there's a carpeted floor, and beneath that, there's just a tire repair kit. There isn't a spare tire in this car, partially because of all the governs involved in this hydrogen vehicle, and also the small battery that sits aboard the Nexo. So that's a view at the cabin and the practicality of this SUV. Let's take this hydrogen vehicle out onto the road. So what's the Hyundai Nexo like to drive? Well, I've been very keen to drive this car. Actually, this is the first hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle I've ever driven. So in that sense, I don't really have any other fuel cell vehicles to compare it to. Not that it really matters because driving a hydrogen fuel cell EV is really about driving an EV. It's, it's an EV with a different energy source to a battery. That being said, there are some key differences to battery electric vehicles particularly in the braking department, and I'll get to that shortly. But first of all, what are the fundamentals going on under the bonnet and underneath this car generally? Well, it's front wheel drive. We've got a front mounted motor producing 120 kilowatts of power and 395 Newton meters of torque. So relatively low power, relatively high torque, and in the real world, it gets along adequately. It's certainly not fast, but nor is it slow or especially sluggish. The Nexo has a zero to 100 time of about nine and a half seconds. Not that many people will be doing speed runs in a vehicle like this, but that gives you an impression that it gets off the line fine. It actually overtakes reasonably well on a country road because it does have a decent surplus of torque, but it's not a performance car. This is no Nexo N, and as far as I'm aware, there's no Nexo N planned. Instead, it's really a demonstration of where the Hyundai Motor Group's hydrogen fuel cell technology is up to. Now, obviously, there has been quite a war of words recently between Hyundai on one hand and Volkswagen and Tesla and other organizations on the other hand about whether or not hydrogen fuel cell is an appropriate technology for passenger cars and passenger SUVs. Now, those that have a lot staked on the success of their battery EVs tend to be deeply against the use of hydrogen fuel cell technology in vehicles this size. And as I mentioned before, the Nexo is basically the same size as a Tucson. Now, Hyundai kind of concedes that what they say is that Today, as a rule of thumb, anything that generally has a petrol engine, they see as being a good fit for battery electric in the future, whereas anything today with a diesel engine is where they think hydrogen fuel cell EV is a good fit. Now, Nexo being Tucson size probably actually fits into the kind of vehicle that would be a battery EV in future. But if you think of Hyundais like the Santa Fe or the Palisade or a hypothetical dual cab ute, then that's probably where Hyundai are currently thinking that hydrogen makes the most sense. Moving a large mass, 
a large unladen mass and then you're also supposed to put seven people into it that's where a battery ev needs quite a lot of energy in order to get moving now of course there are going to be future developments in terms of battery cell technology and some of those we're going to see quite soon indeed and we're hearing a lot out of tesla and volkswagen in that department so it could be that the future doesn't really look the way either party thinks it will but there obviously needs to be you know a bit of exploration a bit of experimentation and that is what the nexo is designed to do and 20 of them are going to be running around here in Canberra as part of the ACT government's fleet. And that will allow, you know, the start of a big data generation project here in Australia. But to return to the fundamental attributes of the Nexo for now, feeding that electric motor up front are three hydrogen tanks in this car, three 52 litre tanks to be exact. And the actual capacity of hydrogen afforded in the Nexo is 6.33 kilos. Now, if you're not intimately familiar with hydrogen fuel cell EVs, I mean, that's completely understandable. 6.33 kilos of hydrogen gives the Nexo 666 kilometers of range on the WLTP cycle. And WLTP tends to be pretty accurate. You know, most of our real world testing finds it to be maybe 10% out at worst, though Hyundai tend to be pretty good at their WLTP estimates in terms of matching them. So the range of this car is equivalent to a pretty long range EV or a petrol powered SUV, quite usable. And for these particular cars running around the ACT, which is a fairly small tract of land here in Southeastern Australia, they're not gonna need to use up all of that range in day-to-day -day driving. Instead, it's likely that it might take a week to get through that amount of range before being refueled at the new station here in the ACT in Australia. But if hydrogen fuel cell EV technology was to take off and become adopted by private buyers, then you can see how a range like that makes a vehicle like the Nexo quite flexible, quite easy to live with, particularly when you take into account it only takes about five minutes to refuel this vehicle uh, at uh, 700 bar pressures. So it's, you know, it's easy to live with. It's an almost straight swap if you're coming out of a petrol or a diesel vehicle. Now, another benefit of hydrogen is that it's, it's very light. It has to be encased in a lot of material, which itself can be quite heavy. But even this Nexo is, is considerably lighter than some EVs. It's, it's just over 1800 kilos as it sits. And so, you know, if you had an EV of about this size with nearly 700 kilometers of range on WLTP, you'd almost certainly be looking at over two tons in weight. So there is a bit of an advantage there for the Nexo. And you do get some benefit from that in terms of the vehicle's agility. Now, this is certainly set up for comfort and not for outright athleticism, but it's actually decent to drive. It turns into corners pretty well. There is a motor over the front axle. It doesn't weigh especially much and therefore turn in is actually quite crisp. And the steering in the Nexo is remarkably accurate and precise. It's, it's, it's quite, you know, encouraging to, to punt along. It's reasonably good to drive. And the chassis tuning is decent, much like Hyundai's other SUVs. It holds the road really well. There has been some chassis development done in Australia for this car, so it's a good fit on the high-speed country roads of the Australian Capital Territory where this car is going to be used, ultimately, for now. Low-speed ride is still a little bit harsh over corrugations, but, you know, it, it certainly fades away as the speed starts to build, and it's entirely livable, really, and over speed bumps and other undulations like that, it's perfectly comfortable riding on the 19-inch wheels that a standard fit on this car. And it generally kind of has this loping character to it that actually makes it quite relaxing to drive. It's not that fast, it's not that sporty, but it's totally capable and yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's reasonably satisfying from behind the wheel is what I would say. The refinement levels in the Nexo are also really decent. There's no sensation of the complicated process happening within the fuel cell stack itself in order to generate electricity for this vehicle. It just gets about its business and it's really quiet. There's also remarkably little whine from the electric motor. So it really just feels like you're driving along quite silently with only a bit of road noise, but nothing major as you're getting along. Even on course chip, the Nexo is relatively quiet inside. Once again, just kind of leaning into that relaxing character of this car. Now, where you do feel a bit of a difference from most battery EVs is that the Nexo doesn't 
need regen braking. You can actually make it regen. You've got paddles for regeneration here on the steering wheel. But while this car does have a battery, it's tiny. The battery itself is only about one and a half kilowatt hours. So it's kind of a hybridized system if you like, but that battery fills up very quickly. And as a result, you can drive this car with zero regeneration with traditional two pedal driving, if that's what you prefer. And then it really does start to feel like that straight swap from a combustion motor with nothing new to learn. It, it feels talky and instant, but you can break this car as you would break a petrol or diesel. You don't have to have it so that when you lift the throttle, you're thrown forward with lots of regen because there's not really any point to regen. The way you refuel this car is by going back to the hydrogen station and sticking the nozzle into it. You know, you're not gonna be able to pump much range into this car via regen with such a small battery. So that means the learning curve to driving the Nexo is basically non-existent. And if you still prefer conventional two pedal driving, then you'll love this because it just drives like a normal car. That's pretty much it. It's also very safe. It's the only fuel cell electric vehicle to be rated five stars for Euro NCAP and ANCAP. There's not too many on the market, but it still has that uh, accolade behind it. And we have all the usual features, adaptive cruise control, strong lane centering, uh, rear cross traffic alert with AEB intervention, AEB for forward progress as well and also the blind spot cameras, which I really like on the latest Hyundai and Kia and Genesis products. They work really well. The whole thing feels solid, safe, remarkably normal, quite satisfying to drive really. So those are my impressions of the new Hyundai Nexo. No two ways about it. This is a fascinating project and there's gonna be a lot of eyes on how this trial of Nexos goes here in Canberra. With 20 of them running around for the next three years, there's gonna be a lot of kilometers racked up on these hydrogen fuel cell electric SUVs, which is gonna be a bit of a test case for whether or not this technology works here in Australia. And with the federal government investing huge sums of money in expanding hydrogen technology, I think it's a safe bet to say that we're gonna see a lot more of this in future. But would you consider a hydrogen vehicle? Would you consider a battery electric vehicle for your next car? What do you think about the differences between the two? Let me know down below in the comments. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.